It appears that former President Donald Trump is big mad over the recent news that the Manhattan District Attorney, Cy Vance, had convened a grand jury that could decide whether or not to indict the former president or other executives at the Trump Organization over some uh, financial crimes. Wonderful. All right. So now we're getting to the financial crimes. Fantastic. Uh, now, at issue, at issue, of course, is whether Trump lied about his assets, inflated them for loans, and deflated them when it came to property taxes. And so I've talked about that quite a bit before. Uh, and, of course, the possibility that Donald Trump, of course, could be a financial white-collar criminal. I mean, the possibility for me personally is incredibly uh, likely. Let's just say that. Incredibly likely. The guy is most likely a criminal. We know, but whether or not he will get punished for being a criminal, well, that remains to be seen. Uh, and, of course, that leads to my skepticism, but we'll get into that in a few minutes. We've got much more to go through before we get into my take. Uh, now, basically, what they're going after is tax fraud, which is illegal, technically. Then again, if you're a wealthy person, if you have a lot of influence, laws don't seem to apply to you. I'm just saying. Uh, now, the Washington Post writes that Cy Vance's investigation is expansive, according to people familiar with the probe, public disclosures made during related litigation. There's been a lot of, uh, of course, there's been actually two different investigations. There's, there's one, of course, from Vance, and then there's Letitia James. And basically the news is that they've kind of overlapped and combined their investigations uh, in, in into one basically gigantic one, which is now apparently got some compelling evidence on their side, at least against the Trump organization uh, and possibly against Trump himself. Uh, now, the investigators for Vance are scrutinizing Trump's business practices before he was president, including the value of specific properties in the Trump organization's real estate portfolio, were manipulated in a way that defrauded banks and insurance companies. Uh, now, we know the number one rule of being wealthy is don't go after members of your class. Don't go after corporations. Uh, if you're part of the, well, not necessarily if you're part of the club, but if you're wealthy, never go after the after the wealthy. Never defraud the rich. Uh, rule number one. Of course, Donald Trump's such a narcissist, and he's such an idiot that he doesn't follow that rule. He'll defraud anybody. Defraud a charity. Defraud the, the Freedom Girls. He doesn't give a shit. As long as it benefits him, as long as he gets something for himself out of it, he'll defraud anybody. Again, he defrauded the American people when he was president. So, anyway. Uh, now, get into more details here. Um, let's see. They also looked at if any tax benefits were obtained illegally through unscrupulous asset valuation. Uh, the DA is also examining the compensation provided to top Trump organization executives, uh, including the Trump children, uh, according to people familiar with the matter. In a statement issued on Tuesday evening, Trump called the seating of the grand jury a continuation of the greatest witch hunt in American history. Uh, so this is Trump's response. Quote, it began the, the day I came down the escalator in Trump Tower, and it's never stopped. They wasted two years and $48 million in taxpayer dollars on Mueller and Russia, Russia, Russia. Impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two, and it continues this day with illegally leaked confidential information. They went to the Supreme Court twice to get the tax returns. So, I mean, I'm just saying that that's that that is actually going to the proper channels. Despite the fact that he fought against this. Um, he then adds, this is purely political and an affront to the almost 75 million voters who supported me in the presidential election. And it's being driven by highly partisan Democrat prosecutors. Our country is broken. Our elections are rigged, corrupt, and stolen. Our prosecutors are politicized. And I will just have to keep on fighting like I have been for the last five years. Oof. But, okay, but what does any of that have to do with the tax fraud? Does he even know what this is about? I, I, I don't think he has a grasp of the situation. Is he so dumb that he doesn't understand that this is not the same as the political trials that he was involved with when he was president. Uh, again, political trial, impeachment, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have done something criminal. Okay, it, it can involve that, but it doesn't mean that 
if you get impeached that you face a criminal uh, uh, penalty. No, no, no. The, 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 the penalty, the punishment for being successfully impeached is losing your political position, getting kicked out of office, and losing your pension. That's way different than this, way different than prison. Okay, for tax fraud, as I said, that is a crime. There are criminal penalties involved here, and that is significant to note. And the fact that this is a special grand jury is also fairly significant. All right. Uh, in fact, according to experts, one of them being Rebecca Rolf, a former assistant DA in Manhattan, who's now a professor at a New York law school, said that the recent step of seating a long-term panel, which is what this is going to be, shows that Vance's investigation has progressed to the point that prosecutors will visit the grand jury, present evidence and witnesses, and potentially ask charges be considered. Now, they, they're not going to present evidence if they don't have any. So obviously, they've got something. The prosecutors, she says, are convinced that they have a case. That's at least how I read it, and she's not the only one. Uh, in fact, recently on MSNBC, you had Harry Littman, a former federal prosecutor, saying this. They got the mother load. They got the tax returns going back and forth to the Supreme Court twice to get them. So that takes all kinds of transactions of this sort and forms the basis for possibly multiple counts where sur people surmise and it stands to reason that it's a similar kind of hanky panky, changing the way you valuate same properties, one for tax to make it look low, one for loans to make it look high. That's fraud on both entities. And I think what, what is happening likely is a plethora of transactions like that, like that core one with Stormy Daniels, which we are learning is sort of the Trump way of doing business, the general MO, all, and also including Weisselberg. So now Weisselberg is important because he's the CFO of the Trump organization. The, if there's any dirty financial dealings, well, that's the guy who would know. It. So obviously he would be a target of this. Uh, now there's more. Now you've also have former senior prosecutor to uh, Robert Mueller, Andrew Weissman, explaining this, how it's, how it's really important and, and talking about the context of the case. Take a look. Well, it's important to keep this in context because that reporting is consistent with what was revealed by the New York Attorney General's office uh, this past summer when they were skirmishing with Eric Trump. So this issue of um, under and overvaluation and tax fraud and bank fraud and perhaps insurance fraud is one that's been uh, going on for some time. I think the big news is that they now have convened a grand jury, and that is certainly a prerequisite to bringing a charge. Whether they get there or not is something that we don't know. I think the fact that they're sitting three days a week is um, unusual um, and suggests the seriousness of purpose, um, since that's not typical. And I would think that this is going to mean that if you're Alan Weisselberg, you know, you are feeling the pressure today um, that this is really ratcheting up uh, what's going on. Again, uh, a, me a big mention uh, is Alan Weisselberg, the CFO. And let me just stop for a moment and just do a, something that's kind of off topic. What's with the audio? That's like scuffed leftist audio right there. No, no, no. O only, only podcasters like myself uh, on the left are supposed to sound like that. Like, you, you probably got money for a better mic. Come on. Come on. But anyway, uh, I'm no legal expert. But let's just say this. Uh, I am not. And, and this is where my cynicism comes into play. Uh, I'm not exactly ready to say. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Wait. No. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, and, and the reason that I say that is I feel like the Trumps have gotten away with so much criminality by now, at least in his lifetime, that uh, I, I'm really I'm kind of convinced at this point that he's going to find some way to weasel out of it. I, I just I maybe again, I'm too much of a cynic. Maybe what I can see here is, yeah, grand jury is important. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's kind of strange. that They're sitting there for for quite some time. Uh, but, of course, they can also look at other cases, and they don't necessarily have to be 100% focused on this. 
I, I get that, but it is a little unusual. Uh, and of course, we do have people that are possibly going to flip on Trump. Uh, again, they keep talking about Weisselberg. He's like the biggest. What I'm saying is that, yeah, there, there's a lot of contributing factors that might get people excited. But at the same time, I'm just saying, I believe it when I see it. I, I'm not, I'm not going to go through this like, oh, they got him this time again and again. Okay, this is like Lucy in the football. This is what it feels like to me. Uh, because, oh, we're supposed to get him with impeachment. Oh, we're supposed to get him with a second impeachment. Oh, we're going to get him with a Mueller report. Calm down, everybody. Calm down. I get it. Political trials, different than criminal trials. I get it. I just feel like rich people tend to get away with way too much. And and, and maybe my cynicism this time is, is unfounded, or maybe it's 100% founded, uh, because there is a reason that they call him Teflon Don. Okay. Um, and there's another disturbing, by the way, uh, a, a thing that I'm, I'm going to talk about as well. All right. I mean, the, yes, it seems like they've got an actual case. It seems like they've got uh, a lot of evidence here. Uh, but you do also have to remember half the country's insane. Half of all Republicans I should say 30% of uh, the country's insane. Half of all Republicans still believe that right now Donald Trump is president. I, and it's insanity. It's insanity. And, and, and by the way, if January 6th taught us anything, is that Donald Trump, his fans, are willing to do insane things. They're willing to do violence on behalf of Donald Trump. I could see a situation where there could be people who are intimidated who fear for their safety. And so they, you know, that might mean, oh, well, we can make a deal with Trump where he doesn't go to prison. You know, if they if they actually find things uh, and, and, and actually go after him with this grand jury and there's indictments and any, any of that. Um, and that's not even a guarantee because we don't know right now the evidence that they actually have. And so I could see all sorts of things going in, in different directions. I mean, all of this is to say, temper your expectations. Don't go too off the rails. Make sure to follow the facts. Make sure to follow where the case goes. Uh, and, and don't get too, too excited yet. Trump could start another insurrection. That's another good point. Uh, and so, you know, even if it gets to that point, and we don't know. So just be skeptical, follow the facts, and we'll see where this entire thing lands. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and share with your friends. You can subscribe and help out the channel by becoming a patron. It's patreon.com slash Jeff Waldorf, or you can become a channel member as well by hitting the join button below.